Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and in this video, we venture back to Ollie's Bargain Outlet for an incredible haul of comic book collected editions. I'm talking about graphic novels, trade paperbacks, hardcovers. There's, you guys, there's a Marvel omnibus in this haul video. I found a Marvel omnibus at Ollie's. From time to time, we do these Ollie's comics related videos. I will link to some of our past coverage here in the corner of this video, as well as down below in the description of this video. But uh, they're an incredible resource for the physical media collector. Sometimes they have DVDs, sometimes they have uh, a lot of cool different physical media, but the comics are really where it's at. So I'm gonna cut to about, I shot about two minutes of footage inside this Ollie's sh store showing you you know, hands on, we get out of the movie room, we go into Ollie's, so you can see for yourself what's actually there and what some of the prices are. Then we're gonna come back here and I'm gonna show you what I actually picked up. So we will be right back after this charming montage. I don't know about you, but I found that footage to be absolutely incendiary. Guys, you can see the deals are incredible. They're, we're talking about the omnibus. Did you see the omnibus for $14.99? It's a $100 omnibus. I'm not going to bury the lead. I grabbed the omnibus. How could I not grab the omnibus? $100 Marvel omnibus for $14.99. Crazy, right? So I had to have it. It's interesting. I have none of the other Marvel Star Wars omnibu. omnibu? I'm gonna buy. I want them. Uh, they're, they're on my list. I just haven't, uh, you know, they're pricier items and I tend to be more of a budget collector when it comes to things like this. But uh, now I feel compelled to track down those three Marvel omnibuses of Marvel's original Star Wars comics. But this, you guys, this is the UK. This is a compendium of all of the stuff that, uh, you know, the Star Wars comics in the UK were really mostly reprints of those Marvel, the, the U.S. Marvel comics, but there were of the, the occasional odd original story. There were interviews, there were features, and that's what this is a collection of. So we're talking about, um, you know, a lot of black and white stuff, which is fine with me. I don't mind that. Um, look at this. This is color cover and then uh, black and white artwork. And they come from really cool people too. So I'll tell you, it says the contributors for this are uh, Chris Claremont, Archie Goodwin, Steve Moore, Alan Moore. You guys, freaking Alan Moore, Star Wars comics. Uh, but what's really cool is this stuff, like this star file, and it's like old 70s and early 80s magazine style promos and things like that. Here, you could test your Star Wars IQ. 
So they're reprinting things from the UK Star Wars magazines. And then you get to the back and it's the Star Wars weekly covers because a lot of the time, maybe all the time, I'm not sure, they had alternate covers to the US uh, Marvel magazines, the Marvel comics. So if nothing else, these are just kind of a cool variation. And then, I don't know, I, I won't, <laughs> we may have to do like a full review of this at serial at midnight.com once I've spent time to actually go through it. Um, oh, check it out. Profiles, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, 14, 1499. Unbelievable. Okay, so the rest of this stuff, you saw there was like a whole end cap there of Star Wars comics. I was so tempted to just like, I'll take this and this and this. I had some of it. Uh, there were some things that I actually am going to go back and get because I felt like I just I felt like I'd spent enough. I had an armful of stuff. I mean, I, 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 grabbed, I grabbed a decent amount of stuff. I did get the Epic Collection. This is the Star Wars, uh, the Newspaper Strips Epic Collection Volume 1. I'm a sucker for an, ep uh, an epic collection. The Marvel epic collection is one of my favorite lines. Talk about them as often as we can. Uh, one of our earlier, more popular videos from a couple of years ago, as I record this video, is a, an overview of Marvel's epic collections. It's one of our more successful videos. So we were one of the first people, if not the first people, talking about epic collections on YouTube, and I still continue to collect the line. This is, of course, a compendium of the newspaper strips uh, back under Marvel's banner. So they've been colorized. I, you know, I, ha I used to collect some of these when these were coming out monthly from Dark Horse. I think maybe they were called Star Wars Classic. I can't quite remember. Anyway, uh, collects Star Wars The Early Adventures number one through nine, classic Star Wars Han Solo at Star's End. Oh, that's a good one. Um, classic Star Wars 1 through 3. Material from Classic Star Wars number 4. The Sunday newspaper strips originally published from March of 79 to August 11th of 1980. So I'm gathering there's more where this came from. Uh, I'm not sure if there's more. Anyway, I haven't told you the price. Uh, this was $5.99. I think it's in the video, but uh, $5.99 for epic collections tend to go between $30 and $40. Oh, this is a yeah $39.99 cover price. So we're talking about deep deep discounted deals you guys i had to grab the canaan hardcover too i have the uh, there's this is two trade paperbacks that collect this entire story it was a 12 issue storyline of the first trade i did not have the second trade this hardcover is five dollars and 99 cents so uh i basically have completed the collection via hardcover i never never did grab that second trade paperback now i don't have to i have the whole thing in one hardcover for probably less than i would have paid for that half you know the, the other the trade paperback volume two kanan is of course a character from star wars rebels but he has been immortalized in the canon of uh the rise of skywalker kanan pops up there's a cameo I'm, I'm gonna call it a cameo he's in the rise of skywalker do you know what i'm talking about i don't spoil anything for you that movie's still relatively um uh, new as i'm recording this video so we're not going to get into any spoilers there but there is a little bit of kanan a little bit of Freddie Prinze Jr. in The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, yeah, the I was like, is that The Rise of the Skywalker, as some people say. Anyway, this is really cool. I haven't even opened it yet. I'll, I'll unwrap it later. Some of these I have taken the stickers off of just because the only downside to Ollie's, and it's, this is a, it's hard to complain about this, but the stickers, these price stickers are on here. Now, this one's this is nice because this is wrapped in plastic wrap, so I can just take the plastic wrap off. But... These stickers, you guys, are on here with like military grade glue. You have to bust out like the WD-40 lubricant. You got to bust out the alcohol sometimes. They are really on there. Uh, and so it's kind of about half of what I picked up. I've already taken the stickers off just because it was bothering me and I wanted a head start. <laughs> like I watch TV, I turn on a movie or something and I just take off the stickers and it's like it's ritualistic. Put on some incense, dim the lights. No, just kidding. Um, I grabbed you guys. This is a one and a volume one and a, a volume two. Birds of Prey, volume one and volume two. Now there is no better time to be coming to the Birds of Prey comics than right now because, of course, Warner Brothers has the Harley Quinn slash Birds of Prey movie headed to theaters. As I'm recording again, if you're watching this in 2025, that's you've, you have it on home home media. It's in your dig digital collection, whatever. But uh, you guys, this is really exciting, and it's interesting because Volume One reprints uh, 
It doesn't start with Birds of Prey. It starts with the Black Canary Oracle Birds of Prey number one, Showcase 96 number three, Birds of Prey Manhunt numbers one through four, Birds of Prey Revolution number one, Wolves number one, and Birds of Prey Batgirl number one. So we're talking about like mini series, mini series is, 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 and one shots. So, um, I don't know. That's it's like before pre Birds of Prey, Birds of Prey. So it's really compiling everything together. Uh, this this Catwoman is one of my favorite eras of Catwoman. I have a, I think I have the first sixty issues unbroken in an unbroken run of this uh, this era of Catwoman. The Jim Balance uh, artist, he was the artist that was on there at the time. Anyway, this was four dollars and ninety nine cents. Cover price twenty bucks. I paid four ninety nine. Same with volume two, this is $4.99, and this collects Birds of Prey numbers one through 11, and Birds of Prey Ravens number one, so essentially the first year of Birds of Prey. Do you guys remember the short-lived Birds, if you're, if you're my age, maybe a little bit younger than me, do you remember the Birds of Prey series that came on, uh, was it uh, the WB, or was it CW, it was one of those cable, those youth-oriented cable networks, kind of Smallville era. Uh, they tried a Birds of Prey TV series. I think it like eight episodes or something like that. But now the Birds of Prey has come back around and uh, now is the time. Next, I picked up Batman, Fug well, it's Bruce Wayne, Fugitive. There's a whole storyline that went, led into this. There was a 10 cent adventure that was a, uh, an early 10 cent. Now we have like free comic book day every year. Years back, 2002 era, there was a 10 cent comic to incentivize you to get into the storyline. It was Bruce Wayne murderer. And uh, just, did Bruce Wayne murder someone? And then it led off into this whole crossover miniseries in the Bat family of titles. And I believe it culminated with Bruce Wayne fugitive because he was not a murderer. Bruce Wayne, Batman doesn't murder. No, if Tim, Tim Burton's Batman absolutely does. I guess Nolan's Batman does too. Well, okay, so Batman murders a lot. Anyway, uh, this is the Fugitive storyline. The whole thing has been collected here. This is a $30 trade paperback. Now, it's a little bit... I don't know how well this is going to show up on the camera. Maybe if I get the glare here. It's a little bit crinkly right here. I think it might have had some, some storage woes, some shelf display damage. Um, but it's not even enough to complain about. This is a $30 trade for $5.99. Okay. Uh, I grabbed this. This is one that's been on my list for a long time. I read this back in the day. I think I read this back in the day, but I don't think that I had this collected edition. I don't think I've ever owned this in a collected edition. This is, of course, the Messiah Complex. This was one of those big deal X-Men crossovers. Uh, a comic book known for big deal crossovers. Like, let's face it, Marvel's X-Men have more <laughs> mega crossover events than they probably should. So much so that when you go back and try to read them, you know, I have a lot of X-Men in issue form. Hundreds and hundreds of issues of X-Men in issue form. There's a lot of back issue cross and forth, like a lot of bin. You got to go, oh, I got to cross-reference this over to Uncanny. Now X-Men. Now Generation X. We're in X-Force now. Oh, this crosses over into Cable. It was like, oh, this is in Wolverine. I mean, there were like six to eight tie-in titles for every crossover. So here's like the complete... Uh, Messiah Complex in one volume contains the Messiah Complex one shot, Uncanny X Men, New X Men, X Factor. I didn't even talk about X Factor. So that's the whole shebang. I took the price tag off of this, but this was $5.99. This is a $30 trade. I think Messiah Complex is one of those X Men crossovers that holds its value. I don't see this in bargain bins a lot, or I probably would have already had it, but. $5.99, that's an incredible deal. They had several copies at my Ollie's. I don't know about yours, but it's worth looking into. Uh, kind of a sequel, pseudo sequel, uh, Messiah War. The X, is this X-Force? It's X-Force slash Cable, the Messiah War, kind of spinning out of the events of the endangered species Messiah complex storyline. Um, is this, this collects uh, X-Men, The Times, and Life of Lucas Bishop, uh, Cable, X-Force, Cable, Messiah War One-Shot, and X-Men Future History, The Messiah War Sourcebook. Oh, you guys, it's got a source book, A source book. So, 
I don't know. I, I'm a big X-Force fan, and when I say X-Force, I'm talking about like the Rob Liefeld era X-Force. New Mutants into X-Force. I'm talking about like Domino, all that stuff. I know it's cool again with, with the Deadpool movies and kind of what they did with, with J-Bro, with, with Josh Brolin, but I love like the OG X-Force stuff. I've got an extensive run in, uh, I have almost a full run of X-Force, well over 100 issues of X-Force, but I don't have... Well, that's <laughs> not the time or place. I've got a lot of X Force. I'm a big fan. So, this is cool to add to the shelf as well and to read and kind of follow up Messiah Complex. I've never read this. I've read Messiah Complex. I've never read Messiah War. I'd like to get back into X Men. I know there are cool things happening with X Men now due to the whole reinvigoration of the line. They've kind of circled back and made it more jumping on friendly for a lot of new readers. People are saying X Men is better than it's been in like a hot decade at least. So I need to go see what's going on with that. Um, and last but not least, I've been collecting Supergirl for a while now. I'm a big, big Supergirl fan. Uh, by the way, we have a video where we go to the Superman Museum in Metropolis, Illinois. I will link to that video right here. Uh, one of my favorite videos. It doesn't have a ton of views, but it's one of the favorite things that I've ever done is I drove to Illinois, went to the Superman Museum, and there's a lot of Supergirl stuff at that museum. Big super fan. I'm a huge Superman slash Supergirl. Just that whole world, you know, the Superman, um, the whole Metropolis, Krypton whatever. I, I'm a big fan of that. So I grabbed, this is Supergirl. This is the Peter David run. They've been collecting the Peter David run um, in these larger trade paperbacks. This is volume three. I have one and two. This is three. There's a four out there that I don't yet have, but I will. It will be mine. Oh yes, it will be mine. But I, they stopped at number four. And I don't understand that because Peter David kept writing. His run is the seminal run on Supergirl. I think if you ask any Supergirl fan, they're going to be like, oh, the Peter David run is like, start there. It's one of the best. But uh, they, DC has stopped collecting it in these, I think it's been several years since the last release. So I have one through three now. This was uh, $5.99. This was a $30 trade paperback and it was $5.99. So... That is the comics for this video, but I do have a bonus. This is not a comic book, but it's a very cool book that I picked up at Ollie's that I wanted to tell you you guys about. So if you want to stick around, I'll, you want to stick around, I'll show you something cool. They have a lot of cool books at Ollie's as well, like just actual hardcovers, coffee table books. They're a great resource for a particular kind of book. That particular kind of book is, th this is what I'm talking about, Vegas Gold, you guys. This is a book, clearly a, hard, a hardcover a uh, coffee table style book that is hundreds of pages. Look at the glitzy, <laughs> doesn't this scream Vegas? It chronicles the uh, Las Vegas as the, like, the entertainment business in Las Vegas between 1950 and 1980. And if you know Serial at Midnight, you know that is our jam. That is home base for C at M. And this book has a ton of cool photographs in it. I'm talking about the Rat Pack, Elvis, uh, Harry Belafonte, the showgirls, the art, the movie posters, Viva Las Vegas, the neon signs. Let's just open it up to any random page. Well, the first random page I open it up to is the Beatles playing in Las Vegas. I love this book. If you follow us on Instagram, we <laughs> how about a little George Burns and Cher? because why not? If you follow us on Instagram, I posted up uh, 10 images from this uh, recently that you may be interested in. Uh, just the coolest. This has quickly become one of my favorite books in my entire collection. I love this book and it's gonna be a spinning off point for so much of this culture. There's movies I've never heard of that are highlighted in this book. Anyway, I just had to shout that out because it's a really cool place to find super cool books. Uh, guys, What's what's going on in your Ollie's? What's happening in your neck of the woods with the Ollie's bargain outlet, the comics? I think a lot of these deals tend to be kind of regional. They just kind of send like cases to different stores all across the United States. Uh, so different people have different things. I'll tell you this: they had Superman, Batman, uh, you know, the Ed McGinnis, the you know, the, the Superman, Batman title. They had the trade paperbacks, volumes two, three, four, five, and six. No number one, but if you're looking for some Superman, my, Super Superman slash Batman, the team up book, they had uh, five full volumes, just not number one. They have Robin, the Chuck Dixon Robin, uh, collected editions of those. They have issues uh, or volumes two, three, and four. So again, no volume one, but uh, really worth checking out. If you're a comic book fan, 
these deals are cheaper than digital. I, I've been doing a lot of digital with comics lately, but these prices are impossible to pass up. And then you own them forever. You're never having to rebuy these things. They are yours. Uh, which is why we champion physical media. We don't have to be only physical media. I think that physical and digital can walk hand in hand for a lot of things, but just a reminder that you own these forever when you buy a hardcover or a physical object. So I don't know what's going on in your neck of the woods. I would love to hear what's showing up at your Ollie's. Guys, thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate you so very much. Just take care. And until next time, I will catch you later.